Hello my friends and welcome back to EVE Online with me Mark from Dadex and today we're going to go back into the Abyss. Now I have bought some faction ammo as you can see here. It gives us 10% more DPS which is well worth having. I got it simply in the name of efficiency. But as you may have noticed there, I've actually popped the wrong filament. This is exactly the same fit as in the last video when we went into a Tranquil Abyss. I... I can only say that I had an old memory of Calm being the lowest tier Abyss and I've popped three Calm filaments and in I go. I haven't realised yet but I do very quickly and I have to decide how to react to it. Now you can get into situations in EVE in many ways where you're out of control of what's happening, whether you're in low sex, somebody's jumped you, you misread what's going to go on on a site and suddenly it's really getting on top of you or you can just make a mistake exactly like I have here and uh, you're in trouble but you have to figure out are you just going to give up or are you going to give it a go now immediately when I get in the room I know I'm in the wrong level of this because there is more than one loot crate we've got the bio adaptive cache and we've also got the extraction nodes we've also got more than one rat so I've decided to go for it it does take me a while to figure out quite what's going on I'm going to go for the bio adaptive cache this should have the most loot in it as you can see these rats are much more hectic than the tier zero ones i'm getting scrambled i'm getting webbed i'm getting target painted by the rats but we're doing okay and we're killing the rats and obviously there's three of them when we've killed one their dps drops by 33 percent pretty much straight away so it should only get safer as we go along I'm going to speed the footage up now to two times speed just to move along through this. They're very ugly, these rats. But luckily, this spawn of three frigates doesn't seem too taxing. So right now I'm just orbiting the bioadaptive cache. And two of the rats have come in close enough to my optimal for me to take those out pretty effectively. The third rat is loitering at longer range. You may have noticed I actually was shooting at him for a while, being a little bit clumsy. The main things here are to keep moving, keep your afterburner running. You could keep the repper going, we're not getting neutered, so there's no problem there. You can get neutered by some ships on these tier 1 abysses, uh, that's why this fit just won't cope with such things, as I may show you later. Keep the repairer running, or run it as you need to, I'll leave that down to you. But you should be able to leave all everything running here, fine. So we're going to go out and chase down the last rat. You can get the stats up on any rat, just by getting their info screen up can be useful I have got a little kind of a, a poster I guess of uh, the different rats and what they do but at this stage as these are going down quite nicely I'm feeling reasonably confident and it hasn't taken much time less than five minutes so I'm going to go and check out the extraction nodes after I've hit the bio adaptive cache you can see we've got a blueprint there which is good I mentioned that in the last video you don't unfortunately get the blueprints on the tier 0 tranquil sites but you do on the tier 1s you can make ammo you can make some modules you can also pick up multi plasmids which will allow you to apply those to modules to produce abyssal versions with random chances of various adaptations i'm checking the extraction nodes just to see if the loot is really poor and it's very poor in that one compared to the bioadaptive cache the loot used to be a little bit more balanced between the three but now certainly if you're at all pushed for time, leaving the extraction nodes alone doesn't seem like too bad an idea. I'm going to go and check this second one. Maybe I'm wasting a little bit of time. I don't know what I'm going to get in the next two rooms yet. And maybe in the back of my mind I'm thinking, well I'm not going to make it through, so let's make the most of it. That lined effect in the background there is the edge of the abyssal site. We'll get a closer view of that later. If you go through it, you take damage. So we got over 2 million out of the bioadaptive cache. Out of this second extraction node, we've got 27,000. And the other extraction node, we've got about 350k. So yeah, just grabbing the bioadaptive caches. Yeah, so grabbing the biocombinative caches. I've been calling them bioadaptive caches for the whole video, and I think for about three years. I've actually just noticed that's not what they're called, so that's funny. <laughs> The Triglavian Biocombinative Cache is the one you want to go for and it's usually right by the gate and it can save a lot of time. The distances across these sites can be huge. Anyway, we're in the second room and we've got a Drekovac, a Triglavian Battle Cruiser. And it can't hit us very effectively because we're small and we're fast because we're going to keep moving. But he's quite a tanky chap, so we're going to get into our optimal and start hitting him. 
We're going to switch to the Navy multi-spectrum ammo. Remember, that's 10% extra DPS. I did it simply to get through the sights 10% faster. But here, it might be a lifesaver. Because I've actually lost most of the ships I've lost in the Abyss due to the timer running out when you get a spawn. And because I'm deliberately running quite low skill, low DPS fits, you just don't have time to kill them. And we're having that problem here. I'm getting a little bit wary. So I'm going to actually start overheating the guns. Now to start your guns overheating, you can either click just on that little green part of the icon there. You can hold shift down and click on the module even when it's already running. Or you could right click and select overheat module. We get an extra 15% to our rate of fire. But you need to keep a very close eye on the percentage of heat damage your module is taking. To mitigate the overheating, you need to learn the thermodynamic skill, which I always learn on every alt. Some people think overheating is just for PvP, and you certainly, when you go into a fight, everything is preheated to maximise the performance of your ship. But in PvE, it can be a lifesaver, where it's an extra bit of DPS, it's extra shield resistances, and you actually find that armour and shield resist modules, when you overheat them, they overheat much more slowly. And I'm going to stop overheating here at 80% damage because I don't want to risk burning out the guns. And I've only got thermodynamics level 3. But do pay attention also to this section of the UI right here. That is telling me that the high slot basically module rack itself is getting hot. And that increases the speed at which the modules are going to overheat. It also means that if you have docked and repaired modules and come out and start overheating too quickly... They'll still overheat quite quickly because those racks won't just cool down because you have docked. You need to give them time. So I've stopped overheating at 80% damage. Just to be careful. If you get 100% damage, your guns die, your missile launchers die, your whatever it is you're overheating. It could be your reps, it could be your prop mod, it could be your tackle. Any active module can be overheated to increase its performance. But if you burn it out, it stopped. I did once in a video get 100% damage shown on my missile launchers, but they kept firing. I cut them off just in time, I guess. So the Drekovac is now down. We've just got uh, less than half the timer left, probably about nine minutes. I'm sure I'll poke, the, I, I'll poke the cursor up there at some stage. I do grab an extraction node on the way past because it's kind of on the way and uh, as per before the loot is pretty poor, about 400 grand. So we're going to grab the bio cache, <laughs> I'm going to stick with that for now. Um, leave the extraction nodes alone, get straight through the gates because if we've got uh, particularly the shacks, if you get those spawn, that's when I've died, when you get two or three the shacks spawn in consecutive rooms and you've got low DPS, they're very hard to grind down. So I'm hoping I haven't got anything like that. Or oh, indeed it could be something that just kills me straight out. But so far I'm two thirds of the way through the site. And I may be beginning to truly believe that if we play our cards right and get a bit lucky with the next spawn it's nothing too dangerous. We might actually make it out of here alive and with a juicy bit of loot. So let's see what's in the bio cash list time. As I say it's usually better loot and that's just under 2 mil. So we're up to about just over four mil for the site so far let's see if we can get the loot out here it doesn't exist until we got it somewhere it can sell of course but before we go into the next room let's have a look at this mumps skin for the giveaway it's this very very handsome kestrel skin and i think the scopes indication skin looks really particularly handsome on this little ship they're currently worth about half a billion isk so even if you don't fly kestrels you might want to get one and sell it anyway on screen now are the winners of last week's giveaway for the obelisk skins and if you want to be entered into the giveaway draw for this week leave your comments down below with your in-game name tell me about a situation that you managed to get yourself out of even though it looked like you might well not make it anything like that anyway let's get into the last room and see what we find no more overheating for us we've got the shack <laughs> he's big he's fat he's tanky he shouldn't be able to do as much damage as long as we can keep our speed up and especially our traversal. You never want to fly straight at these rats. You never want to approach them. I'm heading for the bio cache. But what I'm going to demonstrate what I've just said to you now because I'm thinking, well, I'm short of time. Let's fly back and grab this loot and then go back and get that rat. And you can see because I've now got no traversal and I'm going quite slowly, I take some huge hits. 
and I've got my repper running. I'm going to give the repper a little bit of an overheat, get some more skin back on our bones, and I'm making a point of flying across the front of the Lashak. As you can see, I've manually clicked over there in space. I obviously need to get into range to start applying damage, so I can't be too perpendicular to the rat's fire. But if I can get in close and get my damage applying, he shouldn't really be able to hit me at all. And you see I'm full armor now. And you can see the rat is sitting right on the edge of the abyss bubble, as it were. So if we go through this barrier, which we're about to do, we are going to take a little bit of damage. But because we're small and fast, we won't take much damage. You can see we only just went through the barrier there. We took about three tiny little hits of damage. It's really just the case now of grinding this guy down. We can't overheat. I'm not going to risk it at 80% just in case I burn out the guns and then we are truly doomed. So we've just got to take our time and hope we can get this guy dead before that timer runs out. And we're starting to cut it a little bit fine. But he is going down. He's going down. This is all we can do now. There's nothing else I can do. I guess I could very carefully get two, maybe three cycles overheating out, but I'm not going to risk it. Let's just leave it in the hands of the, I don't know, RNG or the maths or whatever it is. He's going down nicely. As you can see, we're taking absolutely no damage off him now. He, his big gun can't possibly track us. And something to bear in mind with these Triglavian weapons, if you're not familiar, as they're hitting you, their damage will ramp up as they continue to hit you. So if they do get a nice kind of hit on you as you're trying to approach them, say, you're going to go down. But in this case, it is the rat that goes down. We've got over a minute left, a minute 18 seconds when he died, and we're not too far away from the gate. I'm not going to mess around going for any of the extraction nodes. We're going to get the heck out of here. Because we have survived taking a Tier 0 Punisher into a Tier 1 Abyss. I think mostly because we didn't have any cruiser spawns. Cruisers are really, really dangerous. We handled the battle cruiser, the battleship, and the frigates in the first room. But I did think, was I just really lucky with the spawn? So I went back in a couple more times, and in the first one, a cruiser neutered me out. I was dead. I tried to figure out how I might be able to deal with that cruiser. But then the next time I went in, I found a cruiser that just applied so much damage to me from so far away. I was dead. So I've been very lucky with the spawns, but I had to go for it to make it through regardless, didn't I, really? And we've made over 6 million in that Tier 1 Abyss site, just to give you a measure of what the income is like. It's much quicker if you're in an appropriate ship, obviously. I was under a minute when I got out, so it took about 19 minutes total. On the good news front, back in the Tier 0 Abyss, I have successfully sailed through, pretty much, in an Executioner or a Tormentor. It doesn't really matter which one of the tier 1 combat frigates you use, as long as it's fit appropriately. We'll have a look at those in another video if you are interested. But anyway, my friends, I hope you've enjoyed this and found this interesting. As I say over and over again, if you're never in hole, you're playing too dull. This was 19 minutes of very engaging, quite exciting Eve. Just seeing if I could make it through. And the moral of the story is, never give up really. You might make it back to the gate. You might manage to get out. The other guy might make a mistake and drop his tackle. You might get a lucky spawn like I did there and make it through. Just never freeze, never give up. Take it as an opportunity for glory. The best Eve stories, like stories in general, quite often start with things looking like they're going horribly wrong. Anyway, leave us a like if you've liked it. Comments down below with your in-game name to get into that beautiful Kestrel skin giveaway draw. Subscribe if you want to know when the next video is out. I, sh I should be able to get the videos out more regularly for now, guys. But anyway, take care of yourselves and each other. Fly brave and goodbye.